Hey everyone, I wanted to make this video talking about the print-on-demand platform that I never took seriously. I probably should have, I, you know, I probably should have put time in, effort in, but uh, I just didn't. Now, um, this is a website called Spoonflower, and Spoonflower is a website uh, which it's really mostly known for wallpaper. However, you could print a lot other stuff, not just wallpaper. I mean, you guys could see the categories here. Uh, dining, bedding, all that kind of stuff. Uh, creating an account on Spoonflower is allowed. I mean, anybody can pretty much create an account. Uh, I created the account, unless they change something. I created an account uh, over a year ago. I mean, maybe like two years ago or something like that. And um, I was creating a bunch of designs, and I came to find out that none of my designs were in the algorithm, in the search. And at the time, I, you know, requested support, and I asked, how come that is? How come my designs aren't in the algorithm? Uh, this is Spoonflower.com. And basically what the support told me is that I actually have to buy my designs in order for them to be publicly shown. Now, uh, at the time, it didn't really bother me. I mean, maybe it bothered me a little bit, but... Um, I just thought, if I have to sit there and buy every single one of my designs, I might as well put my energy, time, effort, and focus somewhere else. And that's exactly what I did. I, I put my time and effort and energy into other things. Merch by Amazon at the time. And uh, and that was pretty much it. And I just kind of stopped focusing on Spoonflower. And Spoonflower was the thing where I was really, really excited about in the beginning. Uh, because I I looked at the st stats behind it, I looked at the, the traffic, I looked at the competition, and it looked really really easy to win on. It seemed like it was it was something that was really easy to win on. But as soon as I had figured out that I had to buy, sit there and buy every single one of my designs, uh, it just it kind of gave me a bitter taste in my mouth about the whole platform. Maybe you guys have heard of it before. Maybe you haven't. At least now you know. Uh, Spoonflower is a website. It's legit. It's a print-on-demand company. The only thing is you have to buy your products before uh, you actually... They can they can be sold to anyone else. That's essentially the way it works. Now, it's really not terrible because there's this thing called like... Um, they have like this product that's like on discount or whatever it is where you can take like a bunch of different designs and mash them up into one product and that will essentially allow your products to go live and you have, but you do have to buy the physical representation of it. Um, now it's good or bad. I don't know. It just depends on you. At that time, I was just thinking about and putting my energy towards other things. And I figured, why would I even sit here and waste time buying stuff? And, you know, where am I going to fit it all? Where am I going to put it all? There's already not that much space here as it is. Why would I buy all this stuff? Let me just focus on something else. Uh, the price isn't, believe it or not, is not terrible uh, to buy stuff from Spoonflower. But then again, you guys know me. When I focus on a website, I go kind of like a maniac on it. And uh, I do as much as I can. I upload as much as I can in the thousands, in the hundreds. Um, and I do a lot every single day. I really do a lot. And so it just didn't seem like it was going to be a match for me. Now, I feel, I feel as a company, that was a bad decision for them, Spoonflower. And the reason why I say that is because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, and th their whole reasoning behind you why you have to buy it is so that th that you can approve it, quote unquote. Um, you approve your own design, uh, but really that could be mitigated with some mockups. You know what I mean? Like if you take a design like this, if you look at this here, this is a, a decent mockup. Why would I have to sit here and have to buy the product for it to be uh, essentially, you know, featured? But that's essentially what you have to do, and that's just the way it is. Um, maybe they've changed their rules since I don't think they have, at least, uh, you know, I don't think so. Um, but I haven't really seen anybody talk about this on YouTube. I mean, I think, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really seen anybody say anything about it, but, um, yeah, that was my kind of experience. And this is why I'm not on this print on demand platform. I, I feel like as a print on demand platform, if you're going to serve a large community and drive as much traffic as you can, you should try to bring in as many people as you can. Something that I've been thinking on, and you guys let me know, is I've been thinking of creating an actual platform, you know, to compete with Redbubble, to compete with TeePublic, and offer it to you guys to design on there, to put your designs on the platform. Let me know if you think that's a good idea, and if I should invest some time, effort, and money into something like that to bring to you guys. Um, it's an idea. I I'm not sitting here and saying that it's going to happen, but it's an idea. I mean, who really knows? Uh, if I did create my own platform 
and uh, you guys would be on it, obviously. I would think that every single person should have equal freedoms and equal rights. Why would I sit here and force people to buy their own product so that they can actually, quote unquote, approve it before it receives into a marketplace? That's not something I would do. For me, like I said, if I want a platform to grow and I'm the owner of Spoonflower, I would personally want everything to be on the marketplaces as fast as possible so that everybody can essentially you know, essentially grow the company. I mean, there's really no other way to look at it, but I guess they don't see it that same way. What I do know is that it's really, it's it, that, that's just a pseudo idea. Like it's, it's fake. The idea that you're going to sit there and buy your own product to quote unquote approve it. You already know how your product looks, should look like, right? And you already installed it on that website, that design. So the real, I believe the reality is, is that they're doing that so they can acquire some income. Because that way, if the product never sells, at least they made some money off of you, even as a seller. Which, to me, isn't isn't the best model, in my opinion. I feel like you should put your creators first. This was one of the reasons why... When I, and for those who don't know, I actually started first with Merch by Amazon. I Excuse me, not Merch by Amazon, with Fulfilled by Amazon, FBA. Way before I started doing Merch, way before I started doing Red Bull, all that kind of stuff. Like many, many years ago, uh, I was doing uh, Fulfilled by Amazon, FBA. And one of the things that I noticed is that the reason why Amazon is so lucrative is not just because every single consumer on the internet buys from Amazon, but also because... Amazon charges an erroneous amount of fees, a ridiculous amount of fees to the creators. And when I mean the creators, I mean the sellers. A crazy, crazy amount of fees. Um, and you'd be lucky after advertising for you to break even for your product. Uh, and, and I know that there's many people. There's many people who would agree with what I'm saying. And um, that's really what began my story where I started to learn marketing. I started to learn, you know, building websites. I started to learn the value of owning your own site and things like that um, when I started doing FBA because I realized FBA is eating a lot of my profits. You know, I remember I would sell a product for $50. It would cost me about $9 to produce the product and then to get it shipped over here from overseas to the United States, it costs another like two, three dollars per unit. And, um, after I would put it in Amazon, uh, after spending money on ads, after, you know, setting up photography for the product, after hiring copyright, after doing all the pro the work that needs to get done, there wouldn't be much profit left because there were fees, uh, monthly fees. I, I believe it was like a $40 fee that I had to pay every month for uh, Fulfilled by Amazon. And then I had, um, and now I'm out of, uh, I'm out of FBA now. I actually sold all of my FBA products, but, um, there was a monthly fee at the time that I had to pay, and there were also storage unit fees, and obviously the inventory storage unit, it depends how fast you sell, uh, but after you sell, one of the biggest problems is, is that uh, once you're, you, you're, you have to make sure you order more products, even if you don't have the cash, because if your inventory goes out, of, uh, you know, if you're sold out, your ranking is going to drop, and if your ranking drops, you're going to get less sales the next time around, and that actually hurts you severely, so... Um, there, there were a lot, a lot of fees associated with doing Amazon. There was a fee for storage, a fee for selling on FBA, a fee for shipping, a fee for this, a fee for that. And there were even some fees that were like, just didn't even make sense to me. Um, so just being on the platform and things like that, I just feel like if you're a creator or excuse me, if you're a website, you should treat your creators with the utmost respect first, because if it's not for the creators, the website wouldn't be a thing, you know? And so maybe, maybe it's an idea that I should as a, as a business owner, create a platform for all of us, for me, you, everybody watching included, like a Redbubble, like a Tee Public, like a Zazzle, where you guys can sign up to it and uh, upload your own designs onto the platform and uh, sell them just like, you know, you would do on Redbubble or Tee Public, but without all the, without all the hassle, you know, I see people complaining about getting banned on Redbubble, I see people saying on Tee Public their application is not approved for their stuff to go live, look at Spoonflower, you have to pay for your products for them to go live, that's just ridiculous in my opinion, um, the reality is, is majority of people get into print on demand because they have lack of income. You know, if they had more income, they would start their own brands, their own businesses. They would buy products overseas, maybe. Uh, you know, at least that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like when I look at the demographic of the people that join different print on demand sites and, and start a print on demand business is because it's so 
you know, it's it's in in terms of the level of how intrusive it is, very very low on the scale. There are a lot of other businesses that are much more costly and take a lot more work. Let's be honest. And print on demand is one of those things where it really doesn't take that much effort to get going on it. Uh, but once again, um, that's just my opinion. You guys, let me know in the comments. And tell me, and you know, inspire me. Put it in the comments down below. Tell me if you're interested in me creating a platform for us to, you know, as a print-on-demand platform. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that would entail. I'm not exactly sure how that would work. If anybody has even suggestions or any information on that, put it in the comments down below. Um, you know, I'm open to it. It's it's a it's an idea. It's an idea. I wouldn't, you know, I'm always open to ideas. And uh, you guys, let me know. But yeah, this is a video on Spoonflower, and this is the reason why. Um, I never took this platform seriously. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching.